If you need a new website or domain, check out squarespace.com for an all-in-one solution. Hey everybody, and welcome back to a new video. Did you know there's a trick to shooting through a fence and that's getting really close to make it out of focus, rendering it almost invisible, but it can sometimes leave a haze in your photo. You can get rid of it using the dehaze slider in Lightroom. Here's the before and after. In this video, I'm gonna quickly take you through that and nine more camera tricks and hacks to take unique and creative photos. Don't forget to stay for my bonus tip, where I'll explain why your photos shot through a car window aren't sharp and what to do about it. My name is Simon Dantremont and I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature and wildlife photography. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Tip number two, if you're using a monopod, do you know there's a trick to getting a super stable base? Place the foot of the monopod close to your foot and then lean into it with your shin. This bows out the monopod and creates a stiff and stable base with your camera, stilling movement, and more importantly, absorbing shutter vibration when you press the shutter, making your photos much sharper. Another tip, when exporting photos to Facebook or Instagram, do you find that your posted image isn't as sharp as your original? Maybe that's because of the pixel dimensions that you try to upload. While higher resolution usually adds more detail, any photo that's too large is going to get shrunk down in dimensions by Facebook and Instagram, usually messing up the sharpness of the photo. The workaround is to post it in the highest resolution that won't get resized, and that's 2048 pixels on the long edge. Export your photo in your post-processing program to that dimension on the long edge and your posted photos will look great and stay sharp. Next tip, when photographing something small like flowers, rather than getting a wide angle lens and getting really close, try using a long focal length and getting a bit farther away. If you shoot your lens wide open aperture combined with a long focal length will make the background buttery smooth. Position yourself so that what's behind your subject is even farther away in the background and it'll turn your background even smoother. Shoot from a low angle to get at eye level. Use these techniques to get the flower to pop in your photo and look really cinematic. The same technique works on butterflies too. When you go out and it's cold outside, you may have noticed that your battery's life is going down. That's because cold batteries don't hold a charge as well. It's always a good idea to bring some extra batteries in cold weather. But did you know if you put your depleted battery in your warm pants pocket instead of your jacket, it will warm up again and you'll be able to squeeze out some extra shots. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I built my own website using Squarespace and it was easy with lots of templates or customizations if that's what you want. It allows me to collect payments for my products, even internationally, really easily and simply for both my clients and I. Having a website is a great idea for creative artists as you can showcase your work just in the way that you want to present it and allowing you to interact directly with your clients. Squarespace even allows you to build email lists of your clients so you can reach out to them directly with special offers or events. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com Simon to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. For the next tip, if you see birds in your nature walks and you want to photograph them, you'll know that getting close is tough and you always end up getting photos of their backs as they fly away. But did you know that large birds like airplanes need to take off into the wind? Because of this, if you see a large bird like a goose or a swan in the water, position yourself upwind of them as you approach. That way, if they take off, they'll take off in your direction, allowing you to get much better photos. Speaking of birds, I've just launched a new wildlife photography course along with the Journal of Wildlife Photography, Wildlife Photo Essentials with Simon Dantremont, over five hours of content to help you get the skills that allow me to take photos like this, this, and this. This course is targeted at people early to intermediate in their photography journey. The first 500 purchases of this course will have a photo contest, with the winner taking home a 600 millimeter f4 lens worth 13,000 US dollars. Really? Details in the description below. The next tip is on composition and breaking some rules. You may have heard of the rule of thirds. This is where you divide your frame into thirds horizontally and vertically and place your subject on these lines or at the intersection of these lines. While this is okay, these lines aren't magic points on the map. 
They work because they codify two important points. One is that they ensure you don't place your subject too close to the edges, where they feel crowded. Two, they make you avoid the center of the frame, often the most boring place to put your subject. Try compositions that avoid the center and the edges. You'll make your photos more interesting. Also, don't forget that it's nice to leave more room in front of your subject to look into if they're still or move into if they're moving. You don't want them running to the side of the frame. For the next tip, are your photos not sharp? Make sure to try these tips. One, make sure you have enough shutter speed to freeze any movement. One one hundredth of a second for still subjects. One five hundredth for moving subjects. One one thousandth for sports or crashing waves. One two thousandth of a second for fast moving subjects like flying birds. Also, don't stab the shutter button. Movement while the shutter is open is bad, so gently press the shutter button or roll your finger over the shutter button gently. Use a tripod if your shutter speed is under one fiftieth of a second. For the next tip, are you stuck in a rut? Try shooting black and white. A few tips. One, make sure you have a simple scene and composition. If your photo is too busy and no color to separate the elements, everything will fight for attention and it will be a mess. In this situation, less is more. Two, focus on shapes rather than colors. Lines, shapes, and tones. Use these and their movement around the frame to create pleasing patterns and juxtapositions. Now you know that first tip I gave you about shooting through a fence. The reason this works is because of the thin depth of field and causing everything out of focus to be really blurred. So much so that the fence hardly shows up in your photo. To get the maximum of this effect, get as close to the fence as you can with a long lens and shoot as wide open an aperture as possible. These will all make the depth of field as thin as possible, making the fence even less visible. If there's a thin haze remaining from the out of focus fence, don't forget the dehaze slider in Lightroom. The next tip is for shooting pets. There are two tricks to level up your game, and the same applies to wildlife too. Number one, shoot your subject at eye level. Shooting down at your subject just isn't going to give you an intimate connection between the photo and the viewer. Get down on the ground or use the back LCD to get a low angle. Secondly, to capture the personality of the pet in a photo, get it doing what it's best known for. This signature trait helps tell a story and identify the subject. What's a photo of a peacock without showing its tail? The same applies to a pet. Ask the owner, what's your pet best known for? Then that's the trait you want to capture. If the dog is lazy, get a lazy shot. If the dog's favorite thing is fetching sticks at the beach, then that's the shot. Remember also to have the pet looking in your direction or just off to one side. Have you tried shooting from the car window on a cold day and your photos you got came out soft and lacking sharpness? That's because the car is radiating heat out of the window and will create a bubble of shimmering air around your vehicle, leading to soft images. To counteract this, turn off the heater in your car before you get to your location where you plan to shoot and open the windows to clear out the hot air before you arrive. The same effect can happen with the ground, water, or pavement when it gets heated by the sun all day and radiates it back out. This is the same effect that creates a mirage. Get out to shoot earlier in the day before the sun has had a chance to heat things up or go shoot under the canopy of the trees where it's cooler. Remember my sharpness tip earlier? If you're trying all these tips out and your photos aren't coming out as sharp as you'd like, try my video on taking tack sharp pics every time. You can see it here. If you found this video deserving, give it a like and YouTube will show it to even more people, helping others raise their photography game. I hope you can go out and use these tips to get your own amazing photos. I know you can do it.